Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today we will be taking a closer look at the Carnarvon, the tier 8 British heavy tank. So in order to do this review and guide, I will first of all be giving you my recommendation on in which order to research this vehicle's modules. Afterwards, we'll take a quick look at its statistics and compare it to a Tiger II using the 8.8cm gun. Then I'll be giving you a recommendation on what crew skills and equipment to use, as well as my opinion on the ammo loadout and consumables you should use. And then finally we will take this tank out for a spin and I will teach you how to use this tank the most effectively on the battlefield. So we've got quite a curriculum lined up for today so let's get stuck right in. And when we go to the tech tree we can see that the Carnarvon is at the bottom end of the British heavy tank line and for me this is kind of the turning point in the British heavy tank line because the tanks up to tier 7 with the Black Prince aren't really too great in my opinion. I didn't like the sluggish Churchill vehicles but the Carnarvon is quite a change and actually it, it still gets that kind of medium tank like gun that you'd expect from a Churchill but it's a lot more maneuverable and less well armored than the Churchill vehicles. So uh, it's kind of in between between the amazing Conqueror and the really terrible Churchill tanks in my opinion So it was actually quite a lot of fun to play although I'm really looking forward to the Conqueror obviously When we look at the modules actually the Carnarvon is a very ghastly grind and the reason for that is because you cannot mount the top gun until you've unlocked the better tracks but even until you get the tracks, it's still a very bad grind because uh, the problem is that you have to grind the experience for the Centurion Action 10 turret and the 20 pounder gun. That is, if you haven't researched this from the medium tank branch yet, while using this 17 pounder gun that you used on the Black Prince. And that is horrible, believe me. This gun already wasn't very nice at tier 7. But having 150 alpha damage at tier 8 is just simply ridiculous. So uh, that is pretty painful. But after you get the 20 pounder gun, really, you should go ahead and upgrade your engine and radio first. Then get the suspension and last of all get the best gun. Because the upgrade, although it is kind of significant, it's not that big of a deal really. And the 20 pounder gun is already very competitive. And then when you've got this vehicle fully pimped out, then it's actually quite fun to play. So let's look at the stats to find out why. As I already mentioned, we will be comparing the Carnarvon to the Tiger II with the 8.8 centimeter gun and the reason for that is because it is actually very difficult to find a vehicle at tier 8 that compares to the Carnarvon unless you want to start looking into medium tanks because uh, the Carnarvon gets a medium tank gun basically and um, right for back we can see that both vehicles get pretty good DPM values although the Tiger has got the Carnarvon beaten by quite a fair margin here and I was pretty surprised by this actually because uh, for me it always felt like the Carnarvon had very very good DPM but the way it looks it's kind of just average for a tier 8 heavy tank and that's a bit concerning really if you take into account that this gun only gets 230 alpha damage fair enough its penetration is excellent at 226 it's not like kind of top tier at tier 8 like the t-34 or is3 but it is definitely up there and it's a lot better than the tiger 2's penetration just keep in mind please that this is not the best gun on the tiger 2 this is the 8.8 centimeter gun but many actually use this uh, the rate of fire on the Tiger obviously quite significantly better. Now a rate of fire of 8.02 is still very very good but it's just in combination with the alpha damage it doesn't blow you away I'll put it like this. It's still not bad though. What this means you will have the reload of most tier 8 heavy tanks you engaged. You'll have that beaten so you really have to take advantage of that and say if you trade shots around corners you really have to try to put two shots into your opponents for every shot they put into you. And what is especially good in the Carnarvon, which is also very effective because of your good aiming time and accuracy, if opponents come around the corner, you can try to take a shot into the front drive wheel and perma-track them that way uh, if you manage. And that would be very good because of your good rate of fire. So 
Uh, unfortunately, the caliber is not great for overmatching. Not a lot of overmatching will be going on here. Good news is, though, that the shell velocity is very, very good at 1,020 meters per second. The aim time is amazing at 1.82 seconds. That is absurdly good. And the accuracy at 0.31 is also almost laser like really so uh, this tank is an amazing sniper obviously and the dispersion values couldn't be much better either so firing on the move shouldn't be an issue either and you can see that even the german tiger 2 that is actually a fairly well known for its accuracy lags quite far behind the carnarvon in this respect so sniping especially with a good accuracy on this tank and the good penetration is a very very good tactic to go for the elevation and depression angles are also great now i'm not quite sure about these 10 degrees because i've read eight degrees of fun depression somewhere else too so i'm not quite sure if this is actually correct so maybe you guys know and can let me know in the comments but anyway no matter if it's eight or ten degrees it's still fairly good gun depression the speed of the Carnarvon is actually not too great at 34 kilometers an hour. Even the Tiger II gets higher top speed moving forwards than the Carnarvon. However, the power to weight ratio is not bad really at 13.49. It's not amazing, but this tank isn't sluggish really. It feels like an average uh, mobility for a heavy tank. And the good thing is, because this vehicle is fairly heavy at 60 tons, uh, you can definitely ram enemies when you're going downhill or something. The terrain resistance is not great though. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not very good really. And basically, we can conclude that the mobility is just very average really. Your armor, just judging from these stats here, might look like it's amazing. 130 millimeters on the hull and 200 on the turret front. But uh, let me tell you that this is kind of a bit deceiving because you've got quite a few weak spots and especially your hull gets penetrated a lot. I will be showing you some weak spots just in a second, but just keep that in mind that this is uh, a bit problematic here. And actually the Tiger II is but a lot better armor tank uh, in this comparison here. And most tier 8 vehicles will be able to slice through your armor very easily. And actually even most tier 7 tanks you meet uh, will have no problems penetrating. On the other hand though, your health kind of compensates for that. Because it is very, very good at 1060 hit points. That's kind of top notch health. And um, your view range also is extremely competitive at 400 meters. That is basically tier 10 view range, allowing you to spot enemies at quite a distance. So overall, um, summarizing the stats, we can say that the Carnarvon gets a medium tank gun, basically, that is perfectly suited for sniping, but not very good as damage output goes, really. But this kind of amazing gun, I'd say, is balanced by average mobility and lackluster armor but it gets amazing view range. So now we will be going back to the garage for crew skills and equipment. And I'm assuming here that you will be using this crew to carry on to the FE215B and I'm also assuming that you transferred this crew from the Black Prince. So you should really have skilled repairs already because repairs is um, imperative to have on any Churchill based tank. And that also goes to the Carnarvon because of its kind of bad armor and suboptimal mobility. You can't really afford to get tracked in the open. So repairs is very important. And actually Brothers in Arms is not the most important skill on this vehicle because the gun stats are already so good that you won't feel much of a benefit from Brothers in Arms. Still, it's just it's such a good skill to have that I would get that second, really. On the Commander, I would definitely go for six cents though instead of repairs as the first crew skill, and then um, get repairs maybe third. But there's a bit of a toss-up here because actually, Recon is also a really good idea on the Carnarvon as a third skill, I actually might get Recon over Repairs as a third skill even, but that kind of depends on the equipment loadout you go for and we'll talk about that in just a second. Then I'd probably get Repairs and after that Jack of all trades would be a very good idea I'd say.
for the gunner after you've got repairs and brothers in arms there's no question about it i'd get snapshot because this tank is really good at firing on the move and that goes for all british heavies really up to tier 10 so getting this will further increase that advantage and make you more competitive Afterwards, you have to decide between armor and dead eye. I'd say maybe get dead eye first because it's a perk, so you will get the benefit of being able to skill it quicker as a fourth skill, and then you can still get the benefit of a slow scaling of armor as a fifth skill. So that's what I would do probably. For your driver, it's the same story. You want to get smooth ride as a third skill. Then as a fifth, it depends on your personal preference really. Maybe clutch braking wouldn't be too bad actually to do something about that maneuverability. But also off-road driving could be useful because the ground resistances aren't great on this vehicle. And for the loader, safe storage goes without saying. Especially on this tank, the Amorak seems to get damaged quite often. And then as fourth skill, I would definitely go with situational awareness luckily your loader is also your radio operator and the view range is really good on this tank and improving that further is good but only do this if you've got recon on your commander i'd say because otherwise it might go to waste due to the top view range cap of 445 meters in the game so moving on to equipment I got a tank of drummer and that goes without saying you want to get that on every tank but for the second and third equipment slot you basically have three pieces of equipment you want to mount and you've got two slots available so it kind of depends on your personal preference and the choices here between improved vents, vertical stabilizer and coated optics. So in my opinion what I would do if I had the money, which as you can see, I'm pretty broke at the moment, but if I could afford it, I would definitely go for vertical stabilizers and coated optics and miss out on the vents. Because as I already said when talking about brothers in arms, you don't feel the benefit as much as on tanks with kind of more trollish guns maybe. So the vert stabs will really help with firing on the move and um, Coated optics are just so good to improve your sniping capabilities and the benefit is just so much larger than if you use vents in my opinion but I would only really consider getting coated optics if you decide to get recon on your commander again to improve that top view range cap of 445 meters. For my ammo loadout, I decided to go with 45 AP shells, 10 APCR and 5 HA. The HA is actually pretty nice on this vehicle, I'd say. It gets 42mm of penetration, which is more than enough to slice through something like a Borsix armor. Uh, you don't really need the premium shells too much, but just for those occasions when you have to engage some tier 10 German heavy tanks or something, they can come in handy and in my experience 10 have always been enough and uh, you really want to pack a lot of AP shells here because your rate of fire is quite high. And then for consumables I just went with a classical first aid kit, repair kit and manual fire extinguisher although you can obviously pimp those up with some premium consumables if you feel like you've got the credits or gold to spare. So. That is all for the time being in the garage and we can head out to the battlefield now. I've got two pretty impressive games lined up for you guys, so stay tuned and I'll see you in a second. So, we have spawned on Stalingrad in a tier 9 game. Fair enough, only three tier 9 tanks on each team, so this should be pretty good for us matchup wise. And uh, we've headed out to the western part of the map. And hopefully we'll be able to intercept this LTTB on this very cheeky scouting run here. Yes, we will. And uh, right there you can see the kind of pretty bad alpha damage of his gun. But luckily we reload quickly and take him out the second shot. So uh, actually right there we were able to take him out quicker than say uh, IS-3 would have been with our two shots. Because IS-3 would have also needed two shots but with a longer reload in between. So... Those are the kind of situations in which um, the Carnarvon's fast reload pays off. And now we are in a position where we want to be in, facing off against another Carnarvon at long range. You can see this tank's armor isn't very good. We're able to penetrate his lower glacius all the time. And even his upper hull shouldn't be a problem for our gun. 
we are hold down here so um, this is pretty good he can't really hit us properly uh, so we are at a very strong advantage there and get our second frag against the Carnarvon. So now there's an E75 approaching and that is a very dangerous tank for us. I track the AMX 5100. So let's see if we can get some more damage in against him. Yes, we can. Quite a nice roll there, 270 hit points. And now we have to retreat because we definitely cannot take on the E75 one-on-one -on -one. and right there for example an IS-3 maybe would have been able to go through the lower glacier stuff at the E75 there but unfortunately we weren't. Using those mechanics with a wall to hit the AMX 5100 anyway and take him out and right there you can just see how that is the real strength of this vehicle being able to switch between targets very quickly, aim extremely fast, take those quick shots, draw behind cover again, kind of um, almost guerrilla type warfare this tank does is just it's a lot of fun honestly uh, once you kind of get the hang of it at the beginning it can feel a bit you know the lackluster alpha damage and not that great mobility at the beginning you kind of think what well, what is this tank actually good for but it, it's just it feels so rewarding that kind of ability to switch between targets to just uh, you know, take an enemy into your scope to basically be able to fire at him instantly almost is just so satisfying. So, luckily, we get the rear of this T29 here. He doesn't seem to be expecting us. We ignore the Pershing to um, take out the T29 first, one gun less facing us. Now, I uh, luckily get the tracking shot. That was pretty close, but I get the tracking shot in the Pershing. So that is very good. And I take a shot from him. Maybe unnecessary there, but I get the kill, so I guess it's worth. And uh, now it's 10 to 7 as the score 10 to 8, actually. Uh, so it's not looking too bad for us. Unfortunately, though, they still have got two tier 9 tanks where we only have one. So it's still, you know, it's not uh, decided yet, this game. 10 to 9. Oh, this is, this is not looking good, actually. We might lose this one. Um, we've got five kills. Luckily, I'm going to speed the game up a bit here because I don't think a lot happens right now. Um, we're just making our way towards the enemy base because I'm hoping to, uh, as um, both enemy tier 9 tanks are spotted quite far to the north, I'm hoping to maybe cap here. But now I figure, well, they've got a T49. He'll be able to interrupt me anyway. So rather than cap and be a sitting duck because this... Um, this uh, AM, uh, T49 basically only has to sneeze on me with its his HE shells and he'll take me out. And right there you could just see again the very quick aiming of this vehicle. Uh, being able to take that snapshot at the T49. Anyway, so that's the reason why I decided not to cap. Uh, and um, rather to try to chase this T49. Unfortunately, this is pretty difficult being on my own. And this is really where you'd hope that you'd have... Uh, better mobility here but um but still maybe we can do something i have to be very careful this is all about mind games here now really what will the t49 do if he comes behind me and gets me in the rear that's really bad uh, but luckily i get the jump on him and uh, now he is looking for a shot this is really bad he'll need two shots to finish me uh, he'll need one shot to finish me off i will most likely need two so this is really where you'd hope to have that slightly higher alpha damage even only 320 alpha damage like say the tiger 2 the 110 or the t32 would be um sufficient here but unfortunately we have um, only 230 hit points of the alpha damage, that is not very good. Now the T10 has begun to cap. I'm still going to speed this up a bit here because uh, not a lot happens, but then unfortunately the T Type 4 Heavy uh, gets us in the rear. He pops up surprisingly, wasn't expecting that, and he gets us. But I guess uh, the T49 here and the M12 would have probably gotten me anyway at some point with their high explosive shells. Still, uh, we go on to lose this game, obviously, unfortunately. And still, the reason why I wanted to show this to you was because I think it really showcased the ability of a Carnarvon to uh, take those quick snapshots, right? And that's something that is really good on this tank. But now maybe let's uh, head out to another game and see if I can win this one. So for our second round of the day we've spawned on Ents and this time luckily I am at the top of the food chain so that is very nice to see 
and um, I'm heading out to the eastern part of the map here. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing this uh, because usually heavy tanks go into the kind of urban area on the west of Ensk, but in the Carnarvon, uh, because this tank is so good at sniping, I figure that I might be able to make use of my accuracy if I go over here. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, just when I say that, I miss a shot against the Hellcat. That is a fairly chancy one, though. But there I hit, and that is something you could never pull off in um, most tier 8 heavy tanks, really. So that is a real um, plus of a Carnarvon. And right now, you can see this is just really what the Carnarvon is made for long range shots. Uh, no chance for those Cromwells there. And just laser like accuracy rate. This is really good on the tank. And you can see the aim time is amazing. So, unfortunately, that one hits the house, not the Cromwell. But that's just something you can do too because uh, the shots are so reload so quickly and do so little damage in the Cromwell. Uh, sorry, in the Carnarvon. You can, you know, afford to say shoot away cover which uh, enemies are hiding behind to get better shots from them, that kind of stuff. And uh, that's something you can't usually do in, uh, say, a T-34 or something. So we take out uh, our first tank, the Cromwell, in the enemy team, and now um, a KV-4 is approaching, so that could be a tough nut to crack. But before I concern myself with him, I want to take the artillery out of the game. Again, you can see the great accuracy um, coming into play here. And now luckily we get the side of the KV-4's turret. I keep driving, you can see the good accuracy on the move here, I keep driving because I don't want to have to fire up the front of the tank, I set the KV-4 on fire, unfortunately it looks like he's got an automatic fire extinguisher, we put another shot into him, high roll but not enough to take him out obviously, there's no chance of that happening, and now last shot and yes we secure the kill. So. I take a shot from a tier 7 medium tank, but I'm going to focus on the IS-3. Unfortunately, I kind of missed the front drive through there. That was a bit of a misplay for me. I should have taken the time to aim for his front drive, drive wheel. But I now decide to go for his upper glacius, penetrating it because it's at an angle. And now I go for another IS-3. Really, all this time here, I should be going for the shots into the drive wheels of those IS-3s, trying to track them. And uh, this is just something, I'm doing this, I'm not doing it because I'm afraid I'll take fire. But really, that's something that you can, if you can do it with a tank, you can do it with a Carnarvon. And right there you go, that's a perfect shot that you can only do with an accurate tank such as a Carnarvon. And um, really, there is no better tank at tier 8, I'd say, for uh, you know perma-tracking enemies than the Carnarvon. Because of its great accuracy, aim time and rate of fire. So we're up to four frags here and there's only one enemy left on the enemy team. So uh, he gets taken out and uh, that finishes the game of the Carnarvon. And uh, I just hope this could showcase how uh, fast paced you can play your games in the Carnarvon. How you can basically keep that gun firing. And really if the situation is right and your team is steamrolling the enemies like in this game. That is so good for the Carnarvon because it can just keep rolling towards its enemies. Keep that gun firing all the time. You don't even have to stop most of the time to aim because your accuracy on the move is so good. And when you get into these close quarter engagements like I did against these IS-3s and I must admit I didn't play that perfectly there I mean it worked out fine because our team was winning anyway but if this was a close game it would have been a lot better to go for those tracking shots there and that's something that you really can do very easily in the Carnarvon and um, that way even in a tier 10 game for example you can still be a very valuable asset to your team and help your team win because you can always play that kind of supporting role, I guess, if you cannot penetrate your enemies, say. So, uh, let's quickly have a look at the post-game stats, and then I'll give you my kind of final conclusion on this tank. So, we managed to get a first-class mastery badge and a high caliber in this game. We finished top 14 with a whopping 1,200 experience. That is actually very impressive for a game that only lasted about 5 minutes. And uh, we dealt 3,500 damage, pretty nice, got 4 frags, and uh, we can see we fired 21 shots of which 19 hit, so that just gives you the good accuracy on this vehicle. Uh, good damage we dealt here. Now, we weren't firing a lot from range here, some shots we did fire from range, but not too much right there. Still, 
we did quite a lot of damage obviously from close range and that allowed us to get a lot of money and one thing you can see here is that actually uh, if you do well on the Carnarvon or even if you don't do well you can run quite a large profit on the tank because uh, in contrast to other tier 8 heavy tanks the Carnarvon's shells only cost about 200 credits per shot so uh, you don't have to be so afraid about pulling the trigger like you would have to be on say a t34 or t32 and is3 so this tank can still run you a profit although it isn't a premium tank and for those who don't run a premium account out there this might be a very interesting option for you guys now, obviously the repair costs weren't very high in this game because i didn't take a lot of damage so that's something you should take into account uh, yeah, the Carnarvon, basically, if you can either keep it at a range and play it as a long range support tank with that sniping fire, or if you can come in close, have allies that support you and take hits for you, and you can, say, track enemies or aim for their weak spots with those very nice snapshots thanks to your great aim time, then the Carnarvon is definitely a force to be reckoned with. And honestly, although at the beginning I was kind of doubtful of this tank, it is worth, you know, bearing through that pain of a grind i think the carnarvon must be one of the worst grinds in the game but when you get the great tier 9 gun then you can really wreck enemies especially in tier 8 games this tank is so dominant if you play it correctly but it's subtly dominant if you know what i mean it's not like you know an is3 you know what an is3 is going to completely brutalize the battlefield if it's played correctly but the Carnarvon is kind of more of a tank that you know sits around on the sidelines takes all those snapshots and um sniping fire at enemies and then you know it's surprising what it ends up at the top of the team and you know damage dealt or something at the end but it can happen quite a lot so that was all for the Carnarvon a nice tank in my opinion and um, not overpowered at all but still a very nice stepping stone on the way to the fe215b i can't wait to get my hands on that one one day right and yeah thanks for watching as usual i hope this video was informative or maybe even entertaining and if it was, please make sure to leave a like or maybe even subscribe. I would appreciate that a lot. And I hope I see you next time or maybe even on the battlefield. Thanks for watching again and bye bye.